welcome to the Million Pound Mission Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Shibley, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and I'm on a one million pound mission. Now, I've personally lost over 100 pounds, and I've applied what I've learned from my own transformation journey to help my hometown clients lose over 35,000 pounds in just five years. Now I'm on a mission to produce over 1 million pound of results by delivering my best weekly tips, motivation, inspirational stories, and transformation strategies so that you can gain clarity about what you need to do to reach your goals and give you the confidence to take action. And the perfect time to start taking action is right now. So let's do this. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude. How's it going out there in podcast land? Happy 4th of July, my friends. I've got a special episode, plenty of fireworks for you today, and hopefully you get out there and enjoy a little bit of family time with some good, healthy food. Now, this is episode number 153, Eliminate Anxiety with Anthony Treas, and I've got an action-packed episode. This is really, really good. Uh, I want to kick things off and give our sponsor for this episode a shout out, Ultra Human. The ultrahuman.net is the website to go to. Uh, I met Jason Deere, the CEO of Ultra Human, a few months ago, and I was just blown away by his stuff. He, you know, anytime with, with supplements, nutritional products, I, you know, take all the information with a grain of salt because there's just a lot of bad stuff out there. But I, Got to know Jason as a person. I got to know his mission. He sent me some stuff to try out, and I was blown away. I've been giving out samples at my fitness facility. My clients are blown away by the quality of the products. Uh, one thing I want to focus on with this uh, promo piece is the uh, nootropic, the Tau, T-A-O. I always feel weird calling it Tau. I feel like it should be more fancy and call it like Dow or something like that. Um, but he did confirm I should not call it Teo. That was the main thing Jason said. Don't call it Teo, Adam. But it's an amazing product. I've taken nootropics before. And nootropic is basically a cognitive enhancer. It's like rocket fuel for your mind. Getting the most out of your mental abilities. Be able to speak more clearly, which we all know that I need. right? And having bet more social confidence. And just you feel like your your brain is just clicked up to that higher level. And I have been enjoying it uh, every morning. Uh, and we talk in this episode, in this interview with Anthony about anxiety. And it's supposed to help in dealing with you know situations that can pr- uh, produce anxiety. So uh, check it out. Go to theultrahuman.net. Enter in the promo code MPM10 and get 10% off this month. That's MPM as in Million Pound Mission. MPM 10 and get 10% off your order at the ultrahuman.net. Check it out. Now, like I said, this is episode number 153, Eliminate Anxiety with Anthony Treas. Now, Anthony is just a really cool dude. He's uh, an interesting individual. I thought it was a perfect episode uh, for the 4th of July to bring a veteran on uh, to tell his story and what he's doing. Now, we all know that anxiety you know, it's an issue that's impacting more and more people every single day. And it's something that we should all be aware of and we should really be proactive with and not think that we're, you know, immune to that, that situation where we get anxious. Now, this week, like I said, I'm bringing my friend Anthony Treas onto the show. And he's going to give us some tools that are going to help us win the battle against anxiety. Now, Anthony is an Iraq war veteran. Thank you for your service, Anthony. And he is on a mission to help us reclaim our health the sense of adventure and purpose with what he refers to as his strong method. Now, I want you to check out uh, this episode and just dive in because there's a lot of takeaways, all right? So you may want to hit that pause button every now and again and just contemplate what he says. Now, we talk about things like uh, how he dealt with his anxiety and PTSD after he returned home from the Iraq war which is, that's an in-depth conversation in itself, people. I mean, that's, it's an intense deal. Uh, we also talked about why he decided to focus on working with men specifically with his client base, but his principles can be applied by anybody across the board. All right, I'll say that out front. Uh, we talked about the core elements of his strong method, and we also talked about taking some key action steps 
that we should all be thinking about to guard ourselves against high anxiety levels. This is an important episode to dive into. Uh, Use a little bit of your uh, day off time here on the 4th of July to uh, listen in and learn from my friend, Anthony. So this is episode number 153, Eliminate Anxiety with Anthony Treas. All right, Anthony, my friend, welcome to the Million Pound Mission Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Adam. It's great to be here with you. I'm psyched. We met a few weeks ago in San Diego, and I knew instantly that you were somebody that had great energy and a great message, and you can bring some very tactical and helpful tools to my audience. So I'm like, I need to have this guy on the Million Pound Mission, and I'm excited to introduce you to my audience. And I wanted to have you just take a few minutes to kind of go through your story of how you got to where you are now and uh, being an influencer and helping so many people. Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity. So for me, you know, my, the pivotal point that changed in my life was actually upon my return home from my deployment to Iraq back in 2010. Uh, The unfortunate thing is uh, coming back from my deployment, uh, not knowing this ahead of time, uh, just excited to be back home. Uh, The unfortunate thing is I began to suffer from uh, what came to be PTSD, anxiety, and depression, and just so many different things started to hit me. And as a result, it was very um, difficult for me to kind of get to the point to accept this. Uh, it was difficult to, to, I was struggling. I knew I was struggling. I was waking up in the middle of the night, not knowing where I was at. I'd, I'd wake up and just full of just sweat, not even knowing where I was at. I I'd drive under underpasses and my heart would start racing. And, and we had to drive under underpasses in Iraq um, and drive a certain maneuver, drive a certain way in order for the enemy not to lob things over our, our vehicles. But coming back home a, as a civilian, you don't think you're going to are returning to be uh, a civilian. You don't know you're going to be suffering from these kinds of things. And so that's what ended up happening to me. And it was a huge struggle not knowing or, or just accepting I needed to get help. Eventually got to the point where I did. And I, I, I started seeing a counselor and immediately they wanted to put me on medication. The, the thing is, is I, I, I didn't want to go that route. Uh, oftentimes, these medications have side effects, and you end up having to take, uh, you're, you're taking one medication, and then you have to take another to alleviate that side effect, and on and on it goes. So for me, um, I didn't want to go that route. So I started trying different things, and one of the things that I did is, well, what eventually happened is I started isolating myself. I kept to myself. And this was this wasn't good, but during this time, I started taking online classes. One of the things I wanted to do is finish my degree, and I took a health and wellness class. And it was this class that opened up my eyes to the world of health and wellness and how why people are healthy, who's healthy, and what what needs to be done in order for someone to be healthy. Long story short, I ended up uh, then transferring over to. Uh, Oregon State University, where I then finished my undergraduate degree in health promotion, health behavior, and then continued on for a master's degree in public health. I then went into the public health field, and it was there that a light bulb moment hit me where I, I'd been, this organization, this health organization had been around for over 40 years, and they had two women's health programs, but nothing for men. And I'm all for women's health. I mean, we women need to be healthy in order to have healthy children, which impacts can impact their life, uh, their entire life. But there was just nothing for men. And so I, uh, I was a health educator. My position was health educator. So I put on a men's health workshop. And as a result of this workshop, uh, what I, I end up receiving just nothing but praise from these men. And they just they wish that this message that I was that I provided. They, they wish they got it at a younger age. They were happy that they received it now, but wish there were sons were there with them to hear this message. And so for me, I look back at my struggles and then my education and then going in the public health field and saying, there is this huge lack of men's health. And just a light bulb went, moment went off. And I just put all my effort into uh, starting my, my coaching practice and helping men to uh, regain control over their health and mental well-being. That's amazing, man. And there's, there's so much in that story there. I've got a ton of questions that just came up off of what you just said alone. Yes. So I guess it'd be a great place to start is how did you start to kind of un, 
unwind what was going on with you and your own PTSD and start to mm. heal you before you started becoming an influencer on other people? Yeah, that's a great question. One of the things I have been very fascinated with the human brain for as long as I can remember. Everything I can get my hands on about the brain, whether it's a sports performance, human performance, um, the brain health, anything, uh, the subconscious mind, the, anything that help or anything that um, was about the brain, all these new discoveries, they're always making new discoveries about the brain. It was just so fascinating to me. Well, I had come across a, a book called Change Your Brain, Change Your Life by Dr. Daniel Amen, and they conduct the, uh, one of they specialize in is um, providing these spec scans. And it's a, it, what it does is it measures the cerebral blood flow and it can detect what areas of your brain are active or underactive. And so I, after years of struggling, because of my fascination with the brain and wanting to know why I wasn't really uh, getting better, I decided to get my brain scanned. And to me, this was the changing moment because what I discovered after these scans was that there was nothing wrong with me morally. There was nothing. I wasn't a bad person, but I felt bad when I was struggling, when I, I, I'm, I've always been about personal development and personal growth and meditation and visualization, and all these things. But I just wasn't feeling better, like ultimately, like where I'm at right now and having this conversation with you. So the result of these, uh, these brain scan was that I come to discover that I had very active areas in my brain. And these active areas, both at rest and during concentration, because they do two scans, one during con for rest and concentration. And because of my, the overactive areas of my brain would cause me to have um, symptoms of anxiety, obsessive compulsive, hyperactive, hypervigilant. And, and, and there are things I can do, but now I, it was like I can exhale. Because I felt like I was holding my breath for such a long time. And and I, it was like, I finally got this answer. Like, this is what's going on with you. There's nothing, you're not a bad person. There's nothing necessarily inadvertently wrong with you. It's just that for me, I have overactive areas in my brain. So I do fall under a category to take medication. But fortunately for me, in my case, I could take natural supplements. I could do other things. And that was the change. So for my coaching practice and, and my strong method, one of the foundation things that I uh, focus on is brain health and teaching and, and instructing about how the brain works. Because, and I think that's where a lot of the self-help gurus, you know, speakers and authors, they miss the point is that we're programmed a certain way meaning you operate on a certain way. Your brain is operating a certain way. And depending on how your brain is operating, that's going to impact the decisions you make. And the decisions you make on a daily basis eventually is the, the kind of life you ultimately live and the decision and the consequences that you end up having. So for me, that was the pivotal moment. I still remember the time sitting there in the office with the doctor, looking at my scans and him explaining what's going on. And for me, it was like, Someone just gave me my life back. That, that's super interesting. I guess the natural question that popped up for me there was, was, once you got the scan information, were they saying that your brain was that way because of what you were subjected to on your tour of duty in Iraq? Or was it like that and that just kind of enhanced it to be more active in those areas? You know, that's a great question, Adam. And I, I appreciate you bringing that up. And the reason is, is that there's really no way. What I can say is I did not suffer from this before my deployment. I wasn't like this. Um, the anxiety, the depression, I wasn't like this before my deployment. The other, two, the, the, the other thing, the other side of it is, is that I also had a physically abusive father. Um, and so uh, whether that, you know, when a child goes through, they call, them, they call it ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. And those who suffer from adverse childhood experiences also suffer from and have a, are very susceptible to suffering from anxiety and depression. So this experience in the uh, experience in, in Iraq could have enhanced or made it worse. Um, but there's no way of really indicating, but because of that experience as a, as a child, you know, can also impact somebody's life. 
And I believe, I believe it, it, it had something to do with it, but there's just no way of saying, okay, here's because of your experience in Iraq, this is why your brain is functioning the way it is today. And so, um, but I can say that I didn't suffer from anxiety or depression, these sorts of things before my deployment. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's, that's intense stuff, man. I, I, I feel for you. I, I, I know people that suffer from PTSD. I've had a little bit of anxiety issues in my past, but nothing on the level that, that, that you have experienced at all. It's mm. more just like entre- entrepreneurial anxiety of trying to run, you know, <laughs> it's a different level. It's a different level. Um, a totally different thing. So you mentioned your strong method and how now you're using that to help other men and, and you're focused on men yeah. specifically. So, um, let's maybe talk about why you decided, uh, obviously you said you didn't see enough resources for men. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and you decided to focus on that. What have you noticed as far as like, I'm very fascinated with coaching males versus coaching females because my mm-hmm. client base, my successful clients tend to be more female and w- w- with health and fitness. I don't think it's because females are smarter or, or, you know, I think we're all on a level playing field, but I feel like there are certain traits that females tend to bring about where they're willing to ask for help. They're willing mm. to share uh, fitness with other people and bring them along for the ride and get that support. And guys kind of, mm-hmm. like you said, you kind of get isolated and you kind of, I got to figure this out and I've got to be the man and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So what's your approach there as far as trying to help men specifically? <laughs> Yeah, and you're right. The thing is, is that men often will attempt to do everything on their own. We have this this ego in us that we we're men and we want to man up and we don't want to get help. We want to do everything on our own, and that's kind of our our problem. That's kind of our downfall because the truth of the matter is, is that if you look at any successful man, he did not do it on his own. There's always other help. I don't care if you're the best author, the best speaker, the best performer. You got help. You got coached. You got instruction. You you put in the work. Don't get me wrong. You put in the work, but you got help and you help you. And that's where coaching comes in, where we need accountability. We need support. And there's nothing wrong with that. And oftentimes my, my clients are kind of like at their last straw. It's like, look, I've tried everything else. And, you know, here is, is my issue. You know, this is what, um, I'd like to improve. And you're right. Men oftentimes will wait to the last moment that, and that's that when I did my men's health, uh, uh workshop, that's where it, we talked about. We ended up having this amazing discussion afterwards where once you get men into a, a group and you understand, wait a second, I struggle with that too, or he struggles with that, or I, you know, I'm struggling with this. And you kind of under, you end up discovering that we're all human, that men, we are human. We do have our weaknesses and we have our strengths. But once you just understand that, that men also struggle with the same thing and there's nothing wrong with that. And so for me, and, and that's why, and you mentioned this, that women are more kind of inclined to, to get help and ask for help and they want, and they're more in tune with their bodies where men, we suffer. And that's why, that is why I have decided to focus solely on men is because men need the most help. We're suffering from chronic diseases that for the most part are Mm. all preventable. They're all preventable. And it's our lifestyle and behavior choices that we participate in that impact us. Now, now here's the thing. Here's the quote I like to say is, what is wealth without the health to enjoy it? You could be the richest man in the world. You could be the go-getter. You could be the most, the best of the best. But if you're spending the other half of your life trying to take, improve your health and trying to, you know, spending all the money that you made, improving your life, improving your health, then going out and enjoying it and going out and doing things, um, being with your family, being there with your kids and your wife, right? Instead of them, they're going to be taking care of you, right? And so for me, that's why I focused solely on men to help bridge that, 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 um, that piece where it's like, look, you can be the greatest man. You could be the best husband. And there's nothing wrong with getting help and finding what's the best for you. Yeah. I mean, that hits home with me, man. I feel that I feel like it's needed. Like that message is needed. 
mm-hmm. as somebody that deals with trying to help people. So mm-hmm. let's dive into your strong method and, and some of the details on how you're using this method to help men improve themselves. Yeah. So my strong method uh, is an acronym and the S stand. There's three parts to the S and it stands for starting with your brain. You got to develop brain envy. And the reason is, is we're starting to see a lot of people uh, decline in their cognitive abilities. And there's so many reasons for that, whether it's the environment, whether it's the things that we consume, um, all these different things are impacting the way we think our concentration Everything is impacting our brain. But once you begin to understand how important brain health is and the kind of quality in the life that you live, you'll begin to develop this envy for your brain. It's like, look, if I'm going to be the best business owner, the best author, whatever it is that I want to be, we often think more about our physical bodies than our brain. And our brain is the very thing that we use to create the kind of life that we have. So the S is starting with your brain and developing and understanding, at least for the most part, how your brain works, why whenever you're trying to do change anything in your life, you're going up against your brain. Your brain is designed to keep you alive and it doesn't want to work any harder than it has to. And when you're trying to change something in your life, you're trying to change your programming, you're trying to change those neural pathways, you're going to go right back. And you, you, you've experienced this in yourself where – you're the best of the best can last maybe three to four weeks on their own. After that, the brain is going to be like, uh, you know what? This is too hard for me. I need you to go right back. And then we just go right back into the same behaviors that we were doing before that we wanted to change. So the understanding how to keep your brain healthy, how to develop uh, higher performance is the foundation for the coaching. And then it goes into questions as far as what is it you want? as specific as possible. It's not, Hey, I want to lose weight because the truth of the matter is, and not to be gross or anything, but we lose weight every time we go to the bathroom. So you got to be more specific than saying, I want to lose weight. Uh, so be as specific as possible. The other thing is, um, why do you want it? Why is losing weight important for you? Well, so I can play with my kids so I could be there for my grandkids. So I could be there with my wife and spend the rest of our lives together. Whatever that why is, it has to be strong. And the other part of it, the final part of that is why now? Why now? Once you have those questions, uh, then you're ready for the rest. And that's the foundation. So that's the S. Yeah, I love what you just added there at the end. I talk about the why all the time. And one of my phrases I use like almost every episode is that your why has to be stronger than the combined force of all the why nots. If all the why nots hit, the why has to be able to combat that. But I love that you added the why now because – People can delay and be like, well, my why is this, my goal is that, and I'm going to wait until everything is perfect before I get started. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, that, yeah. and that never, you know, the perfect time to start is now. So why now? I love that, Anthony. That, that's, oh, yeah. that's awesome. And, and, and that's, you know, for me, I don't coach every man that comes to me. He's got to have a reason. Like that why now is kind of like that final question I ask. And if it's like, uh, well, mm, then no, they're not ready for me. I'm ready. I'm, I want those men who are ready to go. Yeah, I'm going to straight up steal that from you. I'm going to start asking that question, man. <laughs> I'll just put that Do out it. there. <laughs> so, Do it. <laughs> so that's our S. What's, what's the next yeah. step? The T is you got to be totally committed. Think of the time you were in a relationship or on a team and think of either you or yourself weren't fully in that relationship or on that team or had a teammate who wasn't put, giving it his all. If you're not totally committed, um, it's not going to work. You've got to be totally committed because – Going back to the brain, the brain is going to want you to go right back to those same behaviors, watching TV, whatever you eat, whatever is distracting you from or keeping you from accomplishing your goal. Um, you're going to go, go right back to it. So you've got to be totally committed in that what it is you want. And that why now is really going to reflect, are you totally committed in that? So the T is totally committed. The R is being open to the responsibility, taking on that responsibility for your life 100%. There's a book that came out by Jack Canfield several years ago called The Success Principles. And he mentions in that book, the very first chapter is all about taking 100% responsibility for your life because all the other 100 does not matter unless you are taking charge. And the truth is, is that Oftentimes, people are afraid of that word. They don't want to be responsible. But the truth, the truth is, is that when you do take responsibility, you are in control. You're not waiting for someone else to do something. You're not waiting for anything to ha- happen. 
you were taking the, the bull by horns and you were taking that responsibility and not saying anything that is putting the power in, of your life into somebody else's hands. When you take that power, you're in control. And that's, that's incredible when, when someone says, look, I'm not going to wait for my wife to, to get on board with being healthy. I'm not going to wait for, you know, to have the perfect job. I'm not going to wait for all these different things to happen. No, I'm going to take responsibility for where I'm at right now. And I'm going to go forward. Yeah. That's another uh, teaching point that I really hammer. You're speaking my language here, Anthony and (laughs) taking, I mean, you'll, you'll see how I close the show. I talk about owning it every meal, every workout, every day. And that's something that we try to live by. And you know, so many people get out there, like you said, they're waiting for the perfect time to start. They're like, I'll have a, a program, like an eight-week boot camp, and they'll be mm-hmm. like, oh, unfortunately, I've got a week-long vacation right in the middle of this, so I can't do it. It's not, And I'm like, okay, let's just rewind a little bit, and let's think about what normally happens on a vacation. How does that impact your health? We're like, well, I normally gain about 15 pounds, and I don't go, <laughs> don't go back to the gym for three months. I was like, okay, well, let's learn how to be like a little bit better with your vacation, not totally perfect. You know, I still have fun, mm-hmm. but let's get right back on track afterwards. And we can use this boot camp to teach you that. And they're like, yes. Whoa, novel yeah. idea. So it's t- a new life. Yeah. yeah. Taking, taking responsibility, taking personal responsibility, owning your decisions yeah. and your lifestyle. That's, that's huge, man. That's huge. Yeah. And, and, and you're, you know, the, like the lifestyle you mentioned, you're like going on vacation. It's like, you're, you're the same wherever you go. And being on vacation doesn't mean you stop being, because that goes back to that why, right? You can still enjoy vacation and have a drink and have meals and stuff like that, but you still get up and you go and you do the workout or whatever it is. So the O is all about optimizing your environment. When you're trying to lose weight or trying to improve your life in whatever capacity that or whatever way you want, your environment is going to dictate the decisions you make. So if you're trying to lose weight and you're bringing in chips or you're bringing in soda or you're bringing in things that aren't going to be supportive to helping you to reach your goal, you're not optimizing your environment. If you're trying to decrease your anxiety, how does your environment look? How's your desk look? How's your garage? How's your home? How's your room? Is it just a bunch of clutter? Optimizing your environment to help you to be more support, to help you to be, help it to be supportive to reaching your goals, whatever that means, uh, whatever that is uh, for the goal that you want to accomplish. So environment is huge. It is huge. Yeah. With with optimization, uh, I I mean, clutter and disorganization, a lot of times people think like, oh, I just got to do whatever I have to do to get through the day. But if they were just, I love uh, Jocko Willink. Uh, His his quote is discipline equals freedom. And he's like, you put a little, you invest a little bit of extra time to create some sort of a system, some sort of a plan, some sort of discipline, and that it optimizes everything that you do. You are, I, I have people, I have clients that, you know, I teach, I own a gym, I teach uh, group fitness classes, and they're the people that are always 10 minutes late. And I, I sit them down, I'm like, listen, for the rest of your life, you can be the person that is always 10 minutes late. Or you can be the person that takes 10 minutes at the end of the day to map out your day the next day. And then you'll never be that late person again. It's one for the other. You can be 10 minutes late to everything the rest of your life. Or you take 10 minutes at the end of the day to map out the rest of the, the next day. And it's your choice. Yeah. But it's, it's all about optimization. That's right. Optimizing the environment, like you mentioned, is when you have that, that going back to the responsibility, taking control, making that time. Optimizing your environment is, is so vital in creating a supportive environment for you. We all know what it's like to have a clean room, a clean house. It feels good when you walk in. There's nothing that really needs to be done. You just have, imagine optimizing your environment and, and it being supportive and losing weight and being a better manager, better business owner, whatever it may be. So optimizing your environment is important. So the end, the end is never giving up. And the truth is you and I both know, Adam, you're going to fail. Right. Clients were going to not make it. And that's where the brain comes back in. Your brain wants you to go right back. You're going to fall. You may eat something you're not supposed to. You may not, you know, you may not be so nice to your, those people who are closest to you. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. And there's nothing wrong with failure. That's another big thing is there's nothing wrong with failing, uh, but it's getting back up. You might have gained five pounds while you were on vacation. But guess what you have today and right now there's no tomorrow. There's no in the future. It's right here, right now. What decision are you going to make right here in this moment? It doesn't matter. You, you, you didn't do something that you should have or wanted to do. You have this moment right here, right now. So having that attitude that I'm never going to get up, I'm totally committed. 
And the G, the G is about gut checking your progress. You've got, at the end of the day, you've got to be honest with yourself. If you're not losing weight, look at it. Go back. What is your why? Are you totally committed? Are you optimizing your environment? Right? Go back and look at those things. And just because at the end of the day, when you go to bed, I mean, you can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to yourself. Or you could try. I mean, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't help. But at the end of the day, you got to be honest with yourself. You got to look in the mirror and be like, am I doing everything I can to accomplish my goal? Am I doing everything to do it? Yeah. There's a saying, I don't remember whose quote this is, but I, I, I use it a lot. I might just start using it as my own quote, (laughs) but it's, it's what gets measured gets improved. So the accountability brings that measurement factor and we have to do analysis. I think that's another thing that we as humans in general don't do enough of it's we check the, that goal off the list. Or we check that week off the list and then we just move to the next thing without looking back and saying, okay, how did it actually go? Did I make progress in the direction Did I move the needle in the right direction or not? Mm-hmm. And then how can I make this next week uh, something that I can you know build on that momentum or change things up so I can build momentum. And I, I do uh, a, a journal exercise. I do journaling every day mm-hmm. and then in mm-hmm. the week I do some, some recap. That, that's one thing I'm interested with you is, what types of techniques do you use uh, in your own life to implement the, the strong method? Like, are you doing meditation journaling? Like, how are you applying these techniques in your own life? Yeah, for me, it's all about staying focused. I'm not sure if I mentioned, mentioned this to you or not, Adam, but I'm actually in Bogota, Colombia right now. <laughs> I'm, living, I'm living my dreams, man. I uh, picked a date. I, I have no return date, man. I'm not going back to the United States until I want to. I'm in Bogota for another week. I'm going to Cartagena. Then I'm going to Medellin. And then I'm actually taking off to um, Venice, Italy. I'm living my dreams, man. This is what I do. I'm traveling the world, building my business and inspiring men to live out their adventurous side. And But more importantly, take care of their health so that they can enjoy the success that they have. And so for me, I, I wake up every day and I look at how do I want to create my life? What, whether that, yeah, I, I, I write down, I don't journal every day, but I do write, I do write down specifically the kind of life that I want. And I meditate and I visualize and I think about those things. The, the people who come to me, my clients feel like, you know, they're attracted to me, whether they hear me on a podcast or they see my website, I'm just someone they can connect with and they connect me, they contact me and, and they just, when they when I talk with them, they're just like, man, I just had to give you a call. I had to talk to you. <laughs> so, you know, and it's been great. But right now, I'm, I'm in, like I said, I'm in Colombia living my dreams and traveling the world. Yeah, that, that's something that I can really see because that's, that's what I felt when I got connected with you a couple of weeks ago in San Diego. I'm like, this guy's got great energy and he's got a, a passionate message that, that he stands behind. So I'm like, we got to talk. We got to have him on the yeah. show. So yeah. what... You, you just dropped a bomb on me there. Right? <laughs> well, yeah. So what was that decision-making process? Like that, that takes a lot of courage to be like, screw it. I'm going to go travel the world. Like, absolutely. Like what was the tipping point for you to going from like the normal going through the, mm-hmm. the, the run of the mill average American lifestyle to I'm going to travel the world and, and really experience my dream lifestyle. What, what did that for you? You know, for me, first off, it was a dream. I have this adventurous spirit in me traveling really has expanded my mind has expanded my ex- like my life and for me it was all about practicing what i preach i tell men most often when i a lot of times when i'm helping men with anxiety and depression we we begin to redefine their life it's like what do you want and oftentimes they're like you know what i want to go on a motorcycle camp i want to go hiking for a week and all, and what ends up happening is like, I ask, well, when was the last time you did that? Like, well, I've never. And so oftentimes, you know, for men, when, when we get married and we end up having kids, like we stop looking after ourselves, we stop, f- you know, being f- fulfilled ourselves and we give, and we give a lot, you know, our, our biggest thing is being the provider, right? We work, we work hard and, and that's what we do. But so oftentimes where we deny this uh, adventure or, uh, this fulfillment in ourselves. And, you know, the, the airplane, uh, airlines are the ones who have it right. They're like, you know, put the mask on yourself first before trying to help others. 
And as men, you've got to take care of yourself mentally, physically, and also don't deny that adventurous side of you. You know, it's not saying stop taking responsibility or stop um, dealing with your responsibilities, right? But I believe, and I've seen it time and time again, that when a man starts feeling that when he's fulfilled and he's living out his adventurous spirit or he's doing things that bring fulfillment to him, man, he's an engaged husband. He's an engaged father. He's just, he's able to um, develop the kind of life that he wants when he's not denying that part of him. So for me, it was all about practicing what I preach. Like, man, I love to travel. I'm an adventurous kind of guy. I'm just going to go start traveling the world and sharing my message with other men. And that's kind of what happened. That's interesting. I, I've got a similar impact in my own life, but it's on like a, a micro level. Um, yeah. <laughs> like I, I, you know, I, I've, like I mentioned anxiety and things like that. And, yeah. and I've, I've worked myself into the hospital three different times thinking I have a heart attack. You know, and, but oh, it's just, wow. you're having an anxiety attack and yeah. that was a game changer. I have young children. I've got a wife and, you know, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I need to, I'm, I'm, I'm a healthy guy now and I've lost all this weight and I don't want to, mm-hmm. you know, work myself into the grave. So I started uh, doing things called free days where I would, I would work five days and I have two days that are free days that I, I'm not allowed to work. I'm not allowed to look mm-hmm. at email. I'm not allowed to text message. I'm not allowed to think about work. And since I started implementing those, no anxiety. And the, the cool thing is I use a strategy. It's Friday and Saturday. So mm-hmm. Friday is the day that I invest in me. My, my wife goes to work, my kids go to school and I can do whatever I want, whatever I'm passionate about. I can read a book. I can go and, you know, go hunting or get outside or mow the yard or do whatever, but it's whatever I can yep. sit and watch game of Thrones or walking dead all day. I can do whatever I want. And yeah. it's so, like you said, it's rejuvenating. It recharges my, yep. my batteries. And then on Saturday, that's 100% family focus where I'm like, all right, it's all about the family. And I can be there mentally present, not like worn out and ha- thinking about other things. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually getting ready within the next couple, within the next month, I'm transitioning to a four day work week where I'm going to go Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, uh, you know, you just have to get more efficient and effective with your work time. But absolutely the payoff, like, like you said, you're, you're able to be there and be rejuvenated and be present with what you're supposed mm-hmm. to be present with. So that's my experience. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's the thing is you don't have to travel the world like I do. Right? It, it's not possible for a lot of people, but it's for me. And this is me, the, the, the energy that you're hearing from me, the, the, everything about me. You saw me a couple of weeks ago in San Diego. That's me. I am living my life to the fullest. And this is for this is me. And it rejuvenates me for and it's going to be different for every man. And I'm so excited for you that you like, hey, Friday and Saturday. No, nothing. And oftentimes with entrepreneurs, that's very difficult because we feel like we have to work 24 seven. I mean, believe me, I work a lot too, but I also have to say, look, I have to take care of myself, take care of me. But with those who, who have families, those who have a wife and kids, you know, once you begin to say, look, this is for me, but I'm a better husband because I do this. I'm a better father because I do this. I'm a better man because I do this. And that's where I have found a lot of men that I coach where there a lot of anxiety comes from and their depression is because they're just like, they're denying that part of them and they don't see that it's a possibility. But then as a coach, I could see different areas where like, well, what about this? And they're like, well, maybe I could do that. You know, maybe, and, you know, it's just kind of getting that different perspective and that's just where a coach can help. And there's nothing wrong with getting that coach and getting that help because then what's the cost of you not being there for your wife, being there for your kids, being there for you as yourself and your health and well-being? But once you take some time for it, it, it's, uh, it explodes. It's, it's amazing how it just takes a different perspective and somebody to come and see, hey, this is something that's possible for you. Before you know it, you're like, man, they're doing it. And so it's exciting. Yeah, and – now I actually track all my free days and try to set like personal records and goals each year. Um, you know, like, like last year I did 120 free days, 120 out of 365 wow. were zero work. And wow. my, my entrepreneurial buddies are like, how in the hell are you doing this? <laughs> uh, and I'm yep. like, you just have to start. I mean, I'm sure, you know, like, yep. so maybe, yep. maybe that's a good thing to cover is you have so much experience with grabbing men that are stuck in the rut of life. Mm-hmm. How, what are the baby steps to get them to, to step outside of that and, and start reinvesting some of the time in, them, in themselves and get outside their comfort zone? Like what's, what are some initial baby steps that somebody could take? 
Yeah, that's a good question. And the, the thing is, is that it's individual. You know, is he married? Does he have kids? Uh, how old are his kids? Do they need to be picked up at the at the daycare? Um, you know, what's the schedule like? What is his wife's schedule like? You know, so it's really kind of uh, taking a look at the individual and seeing where their schedule is at and what they do. And then also what are some things that they enjoy and kind of trying to find those things uh, to imp- start implementing it. Maybe they're putting way too much time at the office. And it's like, well, maybe if you left an hour early here and you went and did something, you know, whatever that may be. It's so it's, it's individually, it's individualized as far as like what can be something that they can do. So it's, it's kind of really hearing their story. It's really kind of hearing what their situation is and then going from there. So I'm interested in like how micro you take that first step. Let's say somebody that's just working too many hours and you're going to encourage them to leave the office early. Would you say, Let's set a, a deadline just for one day, like on Monday, you will leave by five. Or are you going to say all week, you're going to leave by five or all month? Like what, what's the, how micro do you get it broken down to? Yeah. So really it's about trying to find that time frame, you know, for them, maybe it's getting up early. Maybe it's going to bed earlier. Maybe it's getting better rest so that you are more energetic through throughout the day, throughout the week. So it's kind of, it, it is, it is a time factor, right? Cause we only have so much time in a week, but we all have the same amount of time. Yep. It's just, where are you putting that time? So it's kind of like really the micro part of it is what's your time? Like, what are you focusing on right now? in your life. And so it's kind of really getting that time. I don't like to, I don't like to necessarily say the time management issue, but it is kind of really coming down to the point is what does your time look like? What does your week look like? Nice. Nice. Yeah. I love breaking down people's weeks and seeing, I've got, I've got, <laughs> I've got an exercise where I have clients actually fill out. They try to estimate their entire week's worth of time and it yep. freaks them out. Like a lot of times it's, it's a, a, a tearful moment when they realize they're spending 10 times as much time at work than they are with their children. Or, mm-hmm. or their spouse. And it's like, damn, like it hits, it hits hard. And you bring up a good point, Adam, because the thing, what I what basically is I bring awareness to men. And once they are aware, right, when they think, oh, when was the last time you did this for your wife? Or when was the last time you took your kids out for a date, right? Or what, you did something special. And then it's like, wow, that's been years or it's been a long time. It's like, well, let's, what, what do you think needs to happen in order for you to make that, that happen and just start creating a plan? But the awareness, that's the power. And oftentimes it's very difficult for a, a person who's in their stuff to kind of look out and kind of be uh, the one who kind of really, oh, wait, I can do this or wait, I can do that. Not to say someone can't do that because I think we all do in some ways, but uh, oftentimes we, we're so busy. And we just can't, uh, it's difficult. That's where coaching yeah. comes in. Yeah. I think, yeah, you just, you hit the nail on the head with the value of a coach and even just the value of some sort of systematized scheduled reflection. And that's what coaching brings is the accountability and reflection where Absolutely. you have, you know, it's so easy, like you said, to get in the routine and just all of a sudden it's been 10 years since you've, <laughs> t- since you've taken your wife out on a date or something like that. Yep. And it's like, where did that time go? We just get... In that pattern, we wake up, we go to work, we go to bed and repeat. And then, you know, so having something to break the cycle, having somebody to be accountable to, to wake us up, uh, mm. that's super important. So, you know, I, I definitely know that the audience is, uh, we've, we've piqued their interest. I can guarantee you that. How <laughs> are people going to get connected with you? How can people follow your story, follow you on social media? What's the best way to follow you? Yeah, the best way to reach me is strongmencoaching.com at strongmen, M-E-N, coaching.com. Or they also can find me on social media at strongmencoach, whether on Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram. They can find me there. Excellent. Now, do you put? are you going to put up pictures of all your world travels on, on social? Is this going to be documented? Yeah, right now I'm doing it on my personal account. So you could find me at Anthony Treas.com. That's T R E A S. I need, I need to, I, I hear social, I hear a link or no, I'm sorry. Um, Instagram is a good one to put. So I, I, you know, the pictures and stuff. Um, the unfortunate thing is the camera that I have that I'm traveling right now or the phone doesn't have to take the best pictures. And so I have to like take two cell phones with me everywhere I go. It's like <laughs> one with the, cause the phone that I have in the States, you know, different things, different phones, different places. But uh, no, I am documenting it. 
I am taking pictures. I do have some on my personal account, Anthony Treas, uh, um, for so uh, for Instagram. But yeah, I definitely need to start adding them to my business, Strongman Coaching yeah. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, you're out there living the life, man. You're leading by example, yep. and that's something that I admire you for doing. And I'll, I'll link up all your important stuff in the show notes and in the blog. Um, I did have one question that I feel like is an important question in general. Now, now I haven't told you this, but I'm saving this episode for 4th of July. I feel like that's something okay. that's a good, you know, with your background, with your military mm-hmm. back background, I felt like that was fitting. And I want to, I'm going to make a, uh, a tradition of that now with, with the podcast okay. <laughs> and you're, you're going to help me kick it off. Now as civilians, what can we do to help out our friends and family members that return from active duty with mm-hmm. PTSD and anxiety issues? Like mm-hmm. how can we support them? I, I'm in that, I, I have friends that have come back and it's mm-hmm. a different ball game. And I just, I want to help, but I don't know what to do. So what are, what are just some simple things to be respectful of them, but be helpful as well? Yeah, Adam, I really appreciate you asking me this question. And for those who are listening, this wasn't planned. (laughs) You know, you brought up an amazing question. and I appreciate you asking this because the truth is once somebody comes back from a deployment or deployment or transitioning from active military to civilian, it's one of the most difficult time periods, especially those who are, have gone to a deployment, have been away from their family, have been away from their normalcy of, of living in the United States. Uh, it is a very difficult transition because one, their experience is individual, whatever, who knows what, uh, the, everyone experiences things differently um, in a deployment, uh, but being away from family and friends, one of the things that they can do is is to, is talk to the veteran and ask how they can be supported in their transition because some uh, don't want to talk about it and there's some that do and for my family they felt like I was somebody who didn't want to talk about it but the truth is is that I did want them to ask me questions I did want them to ask me questions about what I did uh, what I experienced and they didn't do that. And I wish they did. Uh, they know now and they, they have asked me, you know, I've kind of inquired. But for me, for them, they just didn't want to touch uh, a sensitive subject. And I think that's where a lot of civilians, they, they don't want to push the envelope, so to speak. But I think whatever way you can tra- help in somebody in that transition, whether it's helping them to find a job, helping them to go back to school uh, or to that whole process or just being there for them, taking them out to eat. You know, if you ever see a veteran out there in uniform, you know, buy his meal, pay his meal, you know, his or her meal. Um, You know, uh, just we do appreciate when people say thanks for your um, service and those sorts of things. But I think the best thing, whoever that is in your life, to, I guess, make that initial or ask that initial question, how they could best be supported during this transition and uh, just take notes and, and some want to talk about it, some don't, but hopefully those who do want to talk about it, get that opportunity. That's awesome. Anthony, I respect what you just said there and I appreciate you opening up and being, being willing to, to put that information out there for us. And it's, uh, it's something that I feel like is important and it needs mm-hmm. to be talked about more. So I, I appreciate that very much. And um, just in general, I don't say thanks to you, man. This, this, I'm so mm-hmm. psyched that we met. Uh, yes. I think, that it was meant to be that mm-hmm. and I was going through my schedule. I'm like, and I had, na- I had just naturally slotted you in on 4th of July. I'm like independence day. I mean, this is meant to be, man. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I appreciate awesome. you. I appreciate your message. I appreciate your honesty and being open. Yes. I love your mojo. I use that word a lot. The mojo, <laughs> it, it, you're just, it's just strong and very positive. And anybody that interacts with you, anybody that does decide to be coached by you and join your program, I know they're going to get a thousand percent of your heart and your effort and your energy. Uh, so I encourage people to check out your information and uh, definitely, definitely get connected with you, my friend. Yes. Thank you very much, Adam. It's been a pleasure in this opportunity and yeah, I thank you. All right, everybody. Now I mentioned earlier, we're not just about entertainment. You know, Anthony's a good looking guy, but it's not, here. Just, just, you know, we, we drop some knowledge. It's more than, than just his charm here. Uh, so I want you to take action. So maybe it is diving into his website. Maybe it's reaching out to a veteran and, and opening up and asking them how you can be assistant. You know, there's a lot of different action points that Anthony uh, dropped on us today. So I want you to think about those. And I want, within the next 24 hours, 
take action in some way, shape, or form and start building that momentum because that, my friends, I already mentioned it once. That's how we get out there. That's how we own it. Every meal, every workout, every day. I will see you on the next episode. All right. I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as I did. I want to take a couple more minutes and tell you about my million pound mission boot camp. We are launching soon. You can get all of the details on our website, millionpoundmission.com. We are incorporating every component of my amazing results formula, and I've produced something that I think will blow you away. It's unlike any other online challenge or bootcamp program that you've ever seen. And it, like I said, it incorporates all the key components that always produce amazing results for the people that I get to work with. We've got our nutrition formula you get to pick between our classic clean eating plan, our paleo plan, our intermittent fasting plan, or our keto plan. We've got a great workout regimen dialed in where some follow along videos day by day by day. We've got some goal setting that you're going to do with your fitness. We've got a weekly topical course that I'm going to walk you through week by week and do strategic thinking, thinking about all the things that tend to mess us up, those things that tend to drag us back. After we build some momentum, we hit one of those life happens moments and we fall back and crash and burn. No more crash and burns, my friends. I'm going to solve that for you with my Push 56 course component of this online boot camp. And of course, we've got accountability. Uh, several of you have the option to upgrade your boot camp and get a one-on-one daily accountability coach. Otherwise, we have group accountability with our private Facebook page. So many awesome things. I can't sit here and get it all in in a two-minute post roll, but I'm just psyched about this. My goal is to do a 1,000 pounds of results in eight weeks, and I want you to be a part of that. So head on over to millionpoundmission.com. Look for the Million Pound Mission Bootcamp information and get plugged in. Let's do this.